From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. I'm Rob Cairns. I'm the chief digital strategist at Stunning Digital Marketing. In today's podcast, I have my good friend, Birgit Polly Hack, with me. And we are going to talk all things WordPress 6.6 and beyond. This is one show you don't want to miss. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation that Birgit and I had. This podcast is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency that can help protect your WordPress website today. Go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and see what we can do to help you protect your business investment. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody, Rob Cairns here. And today I'm here with my good friend from Automatic and Gutenberg Times, Birgit Polly Hack. Hey, Birgit, how are you today? Hey, Rob, it's so wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. This is like your third or fourth time, or I've lost count, but I appreciate you so much. Um, it's well, been a fun week. I do. It's been a fun week. WordPress 6.6, .6, you were just saying, downloaded 140 million times. Doesn't that say something about the progress of the WordPress project? I think I said 6.5 was downloaded 140 million yeah, times, but I might have same. misspoken. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that is, uh, that's the count that before the release, then it will come. Somebody takes a screenshot of and says it's 140 million times since the last major release. So, wow, it was quite a quite a release. And 6.6, uh, .6, I think in the first hour, 5 million downloads came down. Yeah, it was really interesting to see. Yeah, and 6.6, .6, for those who don't know and haven't uh, followed Matt Monley, uh, Matt posted was actually the 50th release in WordPress history. So that's a big milestone in itself, I think. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, especially with, with so many people involved. Yeah, 6.6 .6 had about 630 contributors um, that uh, committed code to that and also helped with documentation and helped with marketing and, and all the other um, tasks that have to be done uh, during a release, yeah, testing. Um, so it was, it's, it's a really a great team effort. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, I'm so glad that uh, all the contributors kind of contribute to it. And uh, it's a marvelous uh, release, actually. Yeah, so there's some great stuff in there. And if anybody's ever not doing anything on release day, I would encourage them, and I mean this strongly, even if you just watch, join the WordPress.org Slack group. Go to the core channel and watch the release party and watch all the work that goes on. Because I know this year uh, when 6.6 came out last Tuesday, I was at home working on some client stuff and I threw the release party up on a on a second monitor just to keep an eye on what was going mm -hmm. on. Because it is it is a show if you've never watched one before. So go go check one out. The only thing we ever ask you to do is once release party starts is don't post anything about the release going on until we confirm the release is available, right? So that's, right. that's something yeah. we ask. But go, go watch a release party. It's an interesting mm -hmm. dynamic if you've never seen one. Yeah, it is. And uh, even if I'm not part of the release squad and I haven't been uh, the last two releases, um, I always join one of the release parties just to test things, yeah, to kind of test the update. And you use the two plugins and I'll I'll test, okay, updating from 6.5.5 to 6.6. .6, yeah, does that update work? Does that update work from 4.6.7 or so? Yeah, um, so you could roll back and yeah, install it again. It's uh, actually a, a great measure to, to just test, uh, just smoke test. Yeah, but that the upgrades work, but um, you help so much uh, with it. So it's a it's a great great time to be spent. Yeah, and you're part yeah, of it. And I would encourage anybody ahead of time before we get to a release, grab one of the release candidates and throw it on a test site and and have a look mm -hmm. or, or use something like Google 
local WP or playground or Insta WP, like choose one and go in and have a look ahead of time. So you know what you're getting into, because I think that really helps, especially when the phone starts ringing and the client starts saying, help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and there were quite a few changes in that 6.6 .6 that kind of changed um, some of the sidebar items in your posts. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, just finding out the new places where things are. Yeah, where is the sticky post? How does the revision go? And yeah, oh, here's the f uh, featured image in the sidebar. It's all a little bit was reorganized. So it definitely helps when you uh, use one of the release candidates and use it with Playground. Yeah, um, and you don't have to mess with servers and anything else. Just go to playground.wordpress.net. And then uh, you have uh, an instant WordPress um, installation. Yeah, that you can play with. Um, I want to get to some features in 6.6, .6, but we do know we had a bit of an issue with 6.6. Uh, yes. And we do know at the time of this record, 6.6.1 .6 is coming out today. One of the biggest issues being a style problem to do with links being underlined. Um mm -hmm. From all the research I've done, it looks like it's predominantly with Divi themes. I could be wrong, but I think that's, I think that I've heard of some other small cases. Mm -hmm. And I know I asked the question, there was a, a discussion and post status going on and our mutual friend and your colleague, Rich Tabor jumped in and said, uh, last Thursday night said, oh, I don't think it'll be wrong. The code's already ready for it it just wasn't ready for the release candidate was the sense i got i think rich said mm -hmm. that exactly um yeah. was i have to ask you was it do you think it was a mistake to push a release through and hold back that piece of code should we have held the release back like we did with six five for a week or was this our best way to stay on schedule and just kind of deal with it well if you really well, they didn't know it before. It was just for that release yeah. and it was not figured to be a critical one because if yeah. you don't update, you don't have that problem. Yeah. So there was no, and it was, um, well, the issue was that um, <laughs> that every site that had the issue felt being back in the 90s where all the links were underlined. Yep. It's, yeah, it's not something that didn't work or that didn't display. It just looked differently. And uh, with that decision, a design decision that to not have underlines um, on the link. So it's it wasn't a critical uh, bug at anything, but it was widespread. So the release team got together right after the release and say, okay, let's schedule the point release for in two weeks and uh, start with a release candidate because we have a few uh, bug fixes for that. Um, there was another issue and they all had to do with the reduced um, specificity on CSS, on cascading yeah. style sheets, which was um, uh, before it was a major, what's hard for theme developers to override core blocks stylings. Mm -hmm. And to make that easier, one had to kind of change the specificity from the core blocks. Of course, what that um, with that rolled out, what it meant that the previous fixes of core needed to be fixed or needed to be reduced or removed to kind of have it um, come back. But it is one of was one of the things that needed to be done and to be fixed. Um, so the style variations that came also with 6.6 .6, um, and what will come back will, will also come in 6.7, um, that those work and the theme developers will uh, have a better way of uh, working with that. So um, it, was a, it was a bigger, um, and there was a great testing done um, beforehand. Um, also, um, 
quite a few theme developers connected with the developers to kind of see, okay, where was that? And how do we have to adjust it? But that particular piece, the Divi piece, yeah, where for a whole page builder, it wouldn't work. Um, that was kind of not on, a, on the radar, um, but it is now. And the release comes out um, tonight. I think it's um, in, an, in an hour or two. Yeah, but um, that's on uh, July 23rd. So by yeah. the time you, you listen to that, that's all, um, all done. as all done Germans say, yeah, Germans say snow from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, actually, yeah, it'll be just be a couple of days later. So it'll be all done and dusted by then. But yeah. it's just it's just interesting. And I think, you know, this we've talked a lot over the years. Um, I have a bit of a background in tech support before that I have background in programming. And the reality of it is you can never put out a product that's 100 percent guaranteed or we'll be holding everything back till the cows come home. Like, honestly, yeah. we'll just be yeah. waiting. So there becomes a point where you sit. And I think I was, I was just thinking as we we're talking about that, I manage from a security perspective right now, I manage about 375 websites just from security. And out of those, I only had three Divi sites. So, you know, okay. that's, that's where I sit in this mess. So three out of three, <laughs> I've, uh, I'll take them. And I don't think there were, from my standpoint, there wasn't a lot of, I mean, there was some chatter, the usual people complaining about why this wasn't picked up. And my response was, that's the way the cookie crumbles. And we're all humans. Yeah. We're all humans. <laughs> and then there wasn't really, like I know with six five when we held it back for that week, there was a lot of chatter about why we held it back. Again, we did automatic and release team did the right thing as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned. And sometimes you just got to kind of roll with it. So I, I mm -hmm. think uh, a good job. And again, uh, just a real public thank you to Rich for getting back to me. Rich is always uh, one of those go-to guys who's a pretty straight mm -hmm. shooter, yeah. uh, but yeah. automatic. And you guys Definitely are really lucky to have him on his team because he knows mm -hmm. what he's doing. And he was Absolutely. one of the release leads this time around, I believe. So Yep. So he's yep. uh, he's always uh, always in the know. Um, before we move on, one subject I do want to touch on, and there's been a lot of debate on, is WordPress is insecure, and I have to go as as being a security professional. I have to go here, <laughs> and um, what I would say, and we we've had a week. We, um, at the time of this record, we're coming out of Friday where we know what happened with airlines and banks and hospitals in North America mm -hmm. due to a product called CrowdStrike. And uh, and uh, everybody looks at us and says WordPress is insecure. And I read an article somewhere this week and somebody summed it up really nicely. And they said, and so is Microsoft. And mm -hmm. kind of the parallel is, Microsoft is the leader in business operating systems in the world, not Apple, Microsoft, believe me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And WordPress is the leader in web development. And it's not Microsoft typically or WordPress that makes it insecure. It's the add-ons or the third-party products that aren't tested properly that cause the security problem. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. do you think of that analogy? I, I like it. Yeah, I I, um, I totally agree. Um, there is um, there are multiple levels of security, but um, WordPress had this one um, problem a, a couple of weeks ago, where um, passwords for the WordPress plugin repository were yes. compromised. Yeah, where because they weren't um, guarded enough, uh, or there was no second. Um, uh, two-factor authentication in place and somebody got a hold of the password that came from a breach from a total different other system. Yeah, So there was a password file from, um, I don't know which big app that was, um, but then the hackers went through that password file and applied it to the WordPress plugin repository. So somebody not only had an insecure password, but they also reused it on another site. So yeah. As I said, we're all humans and things um, uh, can get really uh, messy fast when we don't pay attention. 
Um, and that is definitely password security is certainly something we all need to pay attention to. Um, and not, not necessarily reuse, not at all reuse passwords, but there are password managers out there. Bitwarden is one, Google has a password manager. Um, LastPass um, had itself password problems. So it's one pass now, but yeah, try to, um, uh, yeah, people need to learn these things because our life depends on it. Yeah, or yeah we, I, I agree with you. We are just miserable. <laughs> Yeah, I, and and I think honestly, I, th I think I've been beating a dead drum lately. Like I just, it's a combination of passwords, two-factor authentication, and I was reading one forum where a dev said, "I don't like to turn two FA on. It's complicated for my clients." So my response is, "It's always that cross between what walks down the site and what makes it easy to use." Do you know what I mean? Like for in this. Yeah. Common yeah. quandary. Says the guy who's had his credit card compromised six times in the last six months, by the way. Just for oh, why? <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. So, so I understand. And I, yeah, and but been, you got help from the banks. Yeah, I yeah, hope. And, I, and I've been there. So it's just, mm -hmm. uh, you just got protected. Yeah. So, um, six, six. So we had a lot of cool stuff come out. Uh, one right. of the things in six, six was the rollback feature, correct? Correct. Yes, that was what the you, rollback feature you, for updates. What do, you, what do you think about the rollback feature? Oh, it's a, a great feature for your peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you auto update your plugins. You have that auto update uh, opt in. But if that doesn't work because the plugin has a, a bug or something like that, there's a safety of rollback. So you get the previous version back um, if something goes wrong, if a fatal error happens. Yeah, it's, um, and, and it only goes to the fatal error um, of uh, when the update is applied and um, something happens. Yeah, then Uberpress um, now knows, okay, if we go back to the other version and try it again uh, with humans involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a How, what do you far... think about it? Um, I like it. Now, what I'll also tell you is I'm not a big fan of automatic updates myself. So um, I've taken the approach over the years, unless I have a site that's on a managed host, because then I don't have a choice. That's mm -hmm. just the way managed yeah. hosts work. Um, I generally turn auto updates off. And the mm -hmm. reason I do is I very much subscribe to the theory I need to take a backup before I do an update. Mm -hmm. So before 661 comes out, I've already um, set 375 websites to do backups today, mm -hmm. extra backups, because I yeah. want backups in my hand. Mm -hmm. So for me, if worse comes to worse, it can always go to restore, but I think a rollback just makes life a little bit easier. Yeah. So. Um, I think it's a good idea. It's a far cry from the old days of having the FTP to your WordPress site, go into the plugin directory, rename the all old your one. plugins to underscore old, and then start enabling them manually one at a time to figure mm -hmm. out what the offender is. And we all know those yeah. days. And we know yeah. if you get a yeah. site with 20 plugins, that's a couple hours down the tube, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But now we have this... Uh... Uh, health and troubleshooting plugin. I don't know if you you use it, but I have found that uh, that tracked down quite uh, a few hours from um, the previous uh, troubleshooting yeah. Uh, yeah. analysis. Yeah, where you just kind of get with one click, you can, and it's all just on your admin. Yeah, so the normal site that it's not involved. Yeah, so with one click you can um, un. Uh, deactivate all the plugins and all the themes and just a default theme comes in yep. and then you can add them one at a time and figure out which plugin was the one but that helped me so much in in, in a lot of places yeah, yeah. although i was uh, <laughs> i was kind of a little uh more trusty and said but but of course yeah uh, i'm with you i I had all our sites when uh, we were at the agency they were all on managed hosting so they had daily backups, uh, they had automatic um, malware removal, they had security scans and all that. Um, so I 
yeah, pretty much did auto, auto updates for all the sites, all the plugins, and then uh, troubleshoot when there was an exception there. Yeah. So, but I also didn't have 350 sites. <laughs> and what I'll tell, and what I'll tell you is, I don't, um, I don't uh, allow my web host to be the only backups. I take my own because mm -hmm. we've yeah. all seen cases of web hosts having backup servers hacked. Have we not? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it has. Just... <laughs> it has happened. I. I it's like all to happens. Be, yeah. I like to be in control. Um, what else was 666 site, Birgit? There's a lot there. There's a lot there, yeah. There's this uh, nice little um, release graphic. Yeah, we have uh, many uh, uh, updates just noticed, and we go. Um, so there were the styles for groups uh, of blocks. Um, that's the so-called style uh, variations, uh, yes. block style variations that you can, a theme developer can provide for their um, in their theme for the um, users. And that those actually um, also work um, depending on how, how it's uh, uh, done um, also for classic themes. Um, so those were really cool uh, because then you have a whole, you don't have to, if you want to have a, a, a call to action uh, that has a header and a picture and a button, if you wanted to change uh, that layout of it, you can now do it with one button click and not have to touch every little thing of it. Um, yeah. So that's really a, a major streamline and um, yeah, and a, a good design um, for themes. So I learned like that. Um, in the same um realm is also uh color palettes and font sets that are separate oh, yes. from the style variations so in addition to the theme style variations um theme builders can also just provide additional color palettes um that uh, can be applied to sections so that's really cool yeah i think so i think that just opens up from a a designer developer's perspective, it's the biggest time saver going because you can make one global change and mm -hmm. you say, well, why would you want all your call to actions the same? Well, from a style perspective and a branding's perspective, it makes sense, right? So right. yeah, people yeah. don't always think that way. And I think you, you need to think that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's two big things. Uh, what I'll say is the rule, I played with both of them in the last week. Um, mm -hmm. I really like the ability to change a call to action building a uh, button across uh, pages. Uh, that's mm -hmm. just like wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're getting there. I think at least, you know, it's pretty stable. Like I haven't seen that m many problems kicking around really, except for yeah. the couple of bugs we've identified. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you foresee? I haven't heard anything much. Yeah, yeah, you haven't heard anything much, no. No, and apart from the CSS problems. Um, you're in the same realm with the style uh, variations and the color palettes and font settings. It's just, um, so for the for the site owners or content creators, yeah. there's a similar uh, feature. It's called the pattern sync overrides, yeah, where yeah. you can have a pattern um, and then um, change, uh, make make sure that you. Uh, that the content creators can change the heading and buttons and all that um, from, from the content, but not from the styling. And when you need to change the styling of uh, a pattern, you can do it in one swoosh across the site. That is actually a feature that has been missing for a while. And that was also was slated for 6.5, but then it was kind of taken out because it didn't wasn't all that intuitive for content creators. And now it really is, and it shines quite a bit. Yeah, it's uh, one it of does. the most talked about features I, I saw on the internet, yeah. Yeah, which is a good thing. And I think patterns are starting to catch on like more and more. I I sit in a couple of groups. Um, Brian Gardner runs a build mode group. I think you know about mm -hmm. on uh, Fridays. Um, he originally ran it with Sam uh, Nunos and then Sam, mm -hmm moved on to another part of WP engine. And, and this has really turned into a um, Gutenberg plugin slash FSC uh, mastermind group is the best way to describe That's it. That's cool. Yeah. 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 You should join, yeah. you should join sometime. If you got the time, we'd love to. Is it on, it. is it on Facebook or? 
No, it's a, a Zoom call every Friday at oh, 11 okay. o'clock Central, 10, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock Central, 11 Eastern. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So Brian runs. Yeah. Uh, Rich has yeah. been known to drop in from time to time, not mm -hmm. as much now that he's employed by Automatic, but he's been mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and McCarthy dropped in a couple of weeks ago for part of the call. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. The pattern manager, you're right. And, um, with 6.6, .6, there's actually the pattern management that was in the site editor is now also uh, available to the classic themes. So yes. all the features that are in patterns, um, you can now get from your WP admin menu, click on patterns, and you have all your theme pattern as well as your own pattern, synced or unsynced. Um, at um, at the disposal and you can um, can change them yeah so um, it's really great that these two that two features yeah one is the theme JSON for classic themes and the pattern for classic theme that they'll kind of come all together and these new features are also available for non block themes yeah so it's really cool it's a little bit of backward compatibility and uh, that's one thing WordPress has always done really well has been compatible mm -hmm. with older versions and older themes and older plugins as much mm -hmm. as we can. And, uh, right. you, yeah. you know, when and... you, when you try and make software, I'll draw the parallel again with that uh, Microsoft company and you try and make everything mm -hmm. backward compatible. Sometimes that has challenges in itself too. Like oh, it, yeah. it, it really does. Absolutely. Yeah. And people think, Oh, why don't we just drop all this backward compatibility yeah. and drop mine in the sand? <laughs> well, alienating your users is a good reason, right? So. Millions of, yeah. Millions, Millions of the users, yeah. 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 You don't want to yeah. do that. So, um, yeah, but um, yeah, uh, these features, the pattern management is actually also to making classic themes future compatible. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So I found that I, um, I just enabled uh, 2020 uh, for one of my testings and I said, oh yeah, I still have my my pattern that I created with 2024 work in 2020. So that was really uh, an eye-opening for me that this that those things don't go away when you change the theme over. Yeah. And then it, it goes both ways, yeah. Um, from classic to block and back again. So it, it, that's really something. I, uh, I haven't seen that for any software that it tries to future-proof um, some of the uh, features here. Yeah, and I think they're just trying to make it easier. The biggest problem now is you're a small company. You go and install a theme. You Small companies tend not always to go with page builders. They'll just go find a theme that works, right? They throw it in there and then a year later, they're like, we don't like this, which we'll change it. And at least now your styles and your color palettes all change with you. So you mm -hmm. don't have to yeah. reinvigorate all of that stuff. And then you're mm -hmm. good to go. Like that is the biggest time saver on the face of the earth. So I think the release team should be commended at doing that. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's some, there are a few smaller things, but they are really quality of life stuff. Yeah, for instance, what a, a lot of designers are waiting for is that you can attach negative margins. Yes. Um, to, Me. to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other one is that you can create custom shadows now uh, with block themes. Yeah, that uh, um, you get a few of four core shadows, drop yeah. shadows. And then uh, you have some interface where you can uh, change uh, or create your own shadows that are, uh, that you can uh, then apply to your groups and to images and yeah, buttons that's a big and deal. all that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, more quality really of life yeah. under the hood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stuff. yeah. And the last one of those is that you now can tab use the tab to indent a list item. That yeah. can, <laughs> that kind of threw me so often because I'm I'm. I'm between Google Docs and WordPress all the time, yeah. And that's yeah. the one feature that's not coming over from Google is tab for indenting list items. So now and it's now, there. And so, now you yes. can. So it's it's yeah. about time. That's just a housekeeping yeah. thing that should have I think should have been done long time yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, where do we sit in all the collaborative editing things that we've been talking about for a couple of releases? Um, the part that has been really improving uh, on that um, are the revisions. 
So yes. revisions for styles, for uh, style variations, um, for global styles, for templates, um, those have been really solid. Um, it's a little bit on the back burner in terms of um, getting it into the editor itself in the black, uh, block editor for creating content. Um, the team right now is really focusing on the uh, redesign of the admin. Yeah, yes. what you see in the data views for the patterns and the pages yeah. and all that. Please. Yeah, we, yeah, where you have the the uh, different layouts and then how to do the bulk action. So uh, they're really concentrating on that right now. And there are two, um, uh, uh, two things in the works. One is to use a form component that is now tested in a in, in a duplicative view, and the other yeah. one is in the um, uh, that is the nah, I just had it <laughs> the forms and the um, the post uh, pages because. You yes. can do the pages with the state editor, but you have to get out into the WP admin to do your posts and they coming in into the site editor and into the new view um, is definitely something. Um, and with it comes not only for the data views, a grid view as well. So you have some, some uh, you see the featured image plus the metadata of your pages or your templates or your yeah. preview of your templates in those data views. And that's just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and the other, um, so there were two forms and the post and the other, the third one is media library. So you know that, I was uh, go <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of the um, poor contributors are now focusing on the media library um, how can this um, kind of keep what we have, but make it better and also put it into uh, the uh, components of the data views and how, how that needs to be expanded. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and we've talked about on the show enough, the media library is due for an overhaul. Like, oh yeah, it's long lovely. overdue. Yes, absolutely. It's long yeah. overdue and needs to be mm -hmm. done. So I... I was just waiting for you to say the media library because you know where my <laughs> you know where my brain goes, right? So. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Mine too. I'm such a visual person and I always have so many um uh, featured images and um yeah, uh screenshots and, and photos that I need to organize that are site uh, even the Gutenberg Times, yeah, which is normally a lot of uh text as well. Yeah. Yep. We have tons and tons of uh images that are not organized, yeah, that I uh I probably have a, a, a dozen duplicates in there uh, just because I don't remember that I used that image already. So yeah. I'm I'm working on a WooCommerce site right now that's got over 2,000 images on it, and mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. so just a few. And you yeah. know, in the, in the world of products, if you have a big retail store and a big online mm -hmm. uh, presence, that's going to mean major work. So uh, this Woo site is just growing and growing and growing. So um, yeah. And you need to be careful with the products. Yeah, you don't want a screenshot from an old product and in, in the um, oh, I know. Yeah, in the store, yeah, it kind of that would be really bad for business. Yeah, so you really yeah. need to be able to organize it. Yeah, this yeah. So turned it into a bit of a monster. It's it's yeah. all there. It's all variable products to even worse. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but we didn't talk about one feature that came with six point six. Oh, go ahead. That is the grid block. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it uh, oh. it's really a great way to. To have some uh, nice layouts um, on, uh, yeah, if it be it pictures, be it um, cards, yeah, like a headline. So you could stack, uh, have a stack of um, things like a heading, a, a picture, and a text, and then have a second stack, and then you put it all together in a grid block, and they are next to each other, and it's just yes. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. another way just to make your design development experience much easier, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's pretty much hasn't been there for WordPress before. Yeah, there are so many things in the site editor where a content creator, wow, yeah. Before that, I needed a developer or I needed to some other page builder that, I, and now it comes out of the box. So it's really cool. Yeah, it, it's really it's really interesting that uh, 
you know, it, it's funny when you look back and you and I have been doing this a long time, both together and, and separately. And we, um, we remember when this was just a blogging platform and look what we can do and look what mm -hmm. we can create and look yeah. what we can build. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I, I, I see nothing but good things for the future. I mean, I think we, we got to get to the point where we start ignoring the Wixes and the Weeblies and the built-in site builders and all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, somebody wants to build a one-page website, go build it on Wix because it's probably not worth your time to spin up a WordPress install. Like I, I would mm -hmm. agree on that. But honestly, for adaptability and changeability, WordPress is st still the way to go. And that's, yeah, uh, very versatile, especially for for both, yeah, for content creators and for developers. Yeah, the new tools, be it block bindings or block hooks or interactivity API, that we talked more about it in six point five, uh, that that are not so prominent now with six point six, but they are there. Yeah, and I see more and more developers um, kind of combining all these features. And there's some great tutorials on the developer blog um, about the uh, block bindings and block styles and all that. So um, to to help developers to to yeah, find the way around and uh, really appreciate it, those um, because the development process also has become easier. Uh, you don't need a custom block for all of it, especially because you now have block bindings. You don't have to do a cr yeah create your own custom block. For metadata, yeah, now it's um, actually built into, and you can just have a um, a, um, a block that uh, taps into those beta post meta, and so it's uh, um, very neat yeah, to have those new features coming in. So, so, but uh, we can't talk about them all all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. so let's yeah. talk about roadmap just a little bit as we wrap up. Um, Seven o November the twelfth, right? Uh, release candidate one October first, I think you said. That's the uh, yeah. That's the so schedule. The proposed schedule for six point seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so six point seven. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it will come uh, with additional sync pattern updates. Yeah, there is one on the horizon for that theme developers can provide sync pattern updates, sync pattern overrides. Um, the grid block has some um, additional experiments that are coming out um, now in the plugin, in the Gutenberg plugin. Um, the roadmap itself it hasn't finalized yet. Yeah, we are we don't have a release um, a squad yet completely. But um, yeah. uh, the core editor and the uh, um, the core core editor leads and uh, core leads, uh, the technical leads are already assigned. But all the others are uh, um, are just kind of um, the post. I think is. Uh, is on Makepark to volunteer for certain uh, roles. Um, and I think Hector is putting together uh, the release squad in the next two weeks. Um, yeah. And um, so that's um, what else? Um, the pattern of rights, yeah, um, data views that will evolve quite yes. a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, the post comes into the site editor. Um, yeah. Uh, there's quite a few things that are in the works for 6.7. Yeah, um, and the biggest thing is, I think it's coming out in November, so it gets us away from that whole holiday shopping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, in, absolutely. In, pa in past years, I think it was last year, was the first year we moved the last release away from December, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think it's one of the best things. But, and that was something the community asked for, actually. And we said, mm -hmm. as a community, we don't need our sites to have issues in December. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no. And or you just defer the upgrade into January. Yeah? Um, but yeah, you still have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have some uh, flight, uh, writing flow um, issues um, that are uh, going to be tackled. They are being drag and drop in the editor, uh, keyboard um, uses, um, rich text, finalizing or kind of looking at it. Um, also multiple selections for blocks. Yeah. So for instance, you cannot yet um, select multiple list items and indent them. You have to do it one at a time or you cannot, yeah, you cannot um, multi-select list items and then 
bowl them all at the same time. You need to do it one at a time. All these, all these little things are definitely something that's going to be looked at. Uh, drag and drop for images uh, or multiple images for the image please. block and gallery. Yeah. Please, please, um, please. So, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. another um, content creator uh, thing absolutely. that I'd like to yeah. go in like yesterday. So. Yeah. Yeah. And there are quite a few tracking issues that you can find in the Gutenberg repo um, that kind of list the things that are, are kind of slated for um, 6.7. So one of them is also to have um, polishing, um, polishing up the query loop. Yeah. Um, yep. What you can do with that. Yeah. Um, there has been quite a feed, quite some feedback in the last three to four um, releases, and um, the team is going to look at it uh, quite a bit to um, kind of get some of those uh, fixed or uh, revisited. Yeah. Could be that it's. Uh, um, needs needs a revision. Um, yeah, post type differences, being away from post types and uh, custom post types or post formats and all that. Um, yeah, that is definitely going to be looked at uh, for 6.7. If anything happens for 6.7, that's a different story. Uh, but the um, the teams are, are, are looking at those things. Yeah, um, definitely layout improvements. Um, what else? Oh, also extensibility, yeah. Um, is there um, something to be thought through the blocks API for the development block, uh, custom blocks um, with all the new I APIs coming in? Um, then, yeah, how to, even the, the light box for the, for the gallery, yeah, that yeah, has been change, change. on the roadmap for quite a bit, yeah. So there's a lot going on, so look yes. forward to that. Birgit, as yeah. usual, I can't thank you enough for making a little bit of time for us. We really appreciate you. Well, um, thank you for if, having me. If anybody wants to check out your work, uh, Gutenberg Times is a good place. It's kind of a must read as far as I'm concerned. Usually hit your inbox Sunday night, usually, if, you're, if your weekend's good, right? <laughs> yeah, if my weekend is good, it's coming in uh, uh, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. if the podcast, uh, if uh, so on every two weeks we do podcast, sometimes it's every month, but uh, uh, lately we have done every two weeks, then the podcast comes in Sunday night. Yes, that's true. Sunday yeah, night, so check night, those yeah. out. And yeah. if somebody wants to get a hold of you to talk WordPress, how's the best way? Well, you can DM me on Twitter, my Twitter, or oh, on X. My my handle is um, uh, BPH, My uh, those are my initials. And the same happens to be on uh, WP Slack, on the Make Slack. You can always kind of DM me or ping me in, a, in one of the channels. I hang out mostly in the Outreach channel, which is a new channel on the Make Blog, where we connect with uh, theme builders and site builders. Um, to um, to discuss the new features and what's working and what's not working and some sometimes it's a little bit more support and sometimes it's more huh good I haven't tried this let's see how we can break it yeah so um, that's definitely a good place to to find me thanks Birgit have an awesome day yeah thank you Rob you too bye this show is brought to you by stunningdigitalmarketing.com your Toronto leader in digital marketing services. Not only do we protect your WordPress website, we can help you with your site, provide social media management for your business, or even do one-on-one -on -one consulting. To find out more, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. A very special thank you to Birgit for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much. I love you. And I think about you every day. For more information about stunning digital marketing, your digital marketing experts, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com or go to stunningdigitalmarketing.info to find out all the great places that Rob Cairns can be found on the web.